Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle news update. Um, two stories I want to talk about today, guys, and one is uh, Flex Wheeler. Uh, there's an update on his Instagram uh, regarding his leg amputation. He kind of uh, definitively defines what happened, which was a uh, SVT, which is a you know, or DVT, I should say. Uh, which is a, you know, a deep vein thrombosis, which is a clot in his lower leg that he's been dealing with, with for quite a while. And if anyone has ever had one, hopefully you haven't. It, it's ve- I didn't have one, thank God, but it's very painful. And I guess it's, they've been trying to you know, clear this out. I'm assuming they were probably had him on blood thinners and it just didn't work. Uh, the pain level got to a point where he just couldn't take it anymore. And you know, you've got to be in a lot of pain to want to have your, your lower leg amputated. I know he said he had gotten off a very long flight that he almost he almost said he couldn't make, and he went right to the emergency room and he landed in Vegas. And they said, "Look, Flex, you know, um, the decision is yours, obviously, but it doesn't look good. I guess one, of, I guess the circulation was compromised seventy percent in one of the veins and a hundred percent in another one. So he was having uh, quite a difficult time oxygenating that lower leg, and he made the decision, which had to be a tough one." But sometimes, you know, being out of pain is better than chronically living in pain because it changes your personality. And, you know, no one wants to constantly have this nagging, you know, uh, discomfort in their body. So Flex made a very brave decision. And uh, he wanted to, he basically, on his Instagram, thanked everyone who supported him. Uh, I know Dennis James had started the GoFundMe campaign for him to help, you know, offset some of his medical bills and stuff like that. And uh, Flex is very grateful, obviously, for that. It seems like he's doing well. Uh, emotionally at this point, uh, he's had some time obviously to, to deal with it. He said the pain level after the amputation has gone down quite a bit and it's much more tolerable. I think he, he described it as a 5 out of 10 as opposed to a 10 out of 10, which obviously is going to be something that he can handle a lot more. And I'm sure over time that's going to diminish probably to no pain eventually. So I'm glad to hear that Flex Wheeler is on the mend. And uh, Flex, we send uh, our prayers and uh, support out for you and uh, as much healing energy as we can uh, muster. So if anyone wants to donate to the Flex Wheel or GoFundMe page, uh, you can go check it out at uh, Dennis James's uh, Instagram and uh, uh, Facebook page. Now, the other story is uh, Jessup Wilcox uh, passed away. This was one of the uh, guys that competed back with Arnold Kle- uh, Schwarzenegger back in the day. He was a training partner for a little bit of time with Arnold. Uh, I think a lot of people kind of recognized him because of that beard. How many guys in bodybuilding had a beard back in the 70s? No one, you know. And he just had that, that stoic like kind of look to him. And uh, he kind of looked like a Hercules, you know. And a lot of people related to him. He wasn't the biggest guy. He always got really ripped. And he had that like just really chiseled look. You could tell he had a, a, a great work ethic. He was actually as high as third at the Mr. Olympia, believe it or not, back uh, in 1984 when Lee Haney won the Olympia for the first time. And Muhammad Makaway was second. So uh, there's Arnold right there with the long hair, probably getting ready for Conan the Barbarian, checking out Jessup in the mirror. And, you know, here's a guy that just, I think a lot of people just recognize from that era, maybe didn't know a lot about. And uh, Nick's power, Strength and Power did a, uh, a little thing on him. And uh, this, we pulled some of this footage from, he kind of did this little com- com- compilation that he got from the internet. So I grabbed it from him because it's, uh, he did a good job on it. He had done a, a little biography on him, you know, I think a year or so ago. And once again, a lot of people just don't know a lot about Jessup, but he was a guy who was a, a fixture in the bodybuilding scene during that era at Gold's Gym. And a lot of people, you know, respected his physique and his work ethic. And he was one, kind of one of the one un, uh, unheralded uh, heroes of the era, you know. He was a face people recognized, but didn't really know the personality. You know, I didn't know that much about him, you know, whereas I know a lot about Franco and Zane and Arnold and, and Ralph Muller and all those guys, you know, that I, I see, seem to be much more, uh, I guess you could say, uh, popular. Even in today's culture, people can recognize him. And a lot of people didn't really know who he was. He passed, and, and you know, he was in good shape right up until the day he died. He looked really good. I, if you look at some of the older pictures of him, he, he looked like he took care of himself. He continued training. And that's, you know, we, we, we want to, you know, respect the previous generation, the guys that kind of built the foundation for what we have today. Because I'm sure he was not monetarily compensated the way the guys are today for doing what they do. Back then, they did it for the love of the sport. Even Arnold didn't make a lot of money. Arnold was winning $1,000 when he missed Olympia. He made all his money in real estate and then in Hollywood. So, 
these guys just did it because they loved lifting weights. And I know I can relate to that because I probably would have done the same exact thing. Uh, had, it, had I not had any money to be made, I probably would have done it anyway as well. And so let's uh, you know, take a moment to just uh, send out our condolences to his family, prayers, well wishes, and take a moment, you know, a few seconds of silence and just you know, say thank you to our forefathers who made it possible to have the, the bodybuilding world that we have today with the popularity it has today, the contest it has today, uh, the t- training techniques that we have today, the dieting techniques as well, because they were all fostered early on, you know, in the 60s and 70s and into the 80s. And then obviously we took it and, and when I came around in the 90s, I took it, made it my own. And, and every generation seems to do that and take it to the next level. So Flex, we send our prayers out to you. Uh, Jessup's family, we send our prayers out to you as well. Uh, Dave Palumbo here with another RX Muscle news update.